हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी क्लास लास्ट क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सम वेरिएबल्स दैट वेर डिस्प्लेसमेंट टाइम दैट वेर वेलोसिटी टाइम टुडे क्लास विल स्टार्ट विद एक्सीजन टाइम ग्राफ एंड लेटर ऑन विल स्टडी अबाउट रिलेटिव मोशन लेट्स गो हेड विद अंडरस्टैंडिंग द ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ एक्सेलरेशन एंड टाइम वेरिएशन सो फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ टुडेस क्लास विल बी कंटिन्यूएशन फ्रॉम द लास्ट क्लास दैट इज द एक्सेलरेशन टाइम ग्राफ नाउ ऑलरेडी वी हैव डन with the displacement time graph and we have also learned about velocity time curve accident time curve the one kind of this let's say when the case is of uniform acceleration if the acceleration is uniform then we will be having a straight line curve and the line will be parallel to the time axis that is what i mean to say let's say on the x axis we have time and on the y axis we have acceleration now if the acceleration is uniform that means we are talking of constant acceleration acceleration will be constant and hence there will be no change in acceleration now suppose what what if we want what we can obtain from acceleration time curve we can obtain change in velocity from two fixed instances of time or let's say during a duration of time we can obtain change in velocity see what i mean to say suppose if we take time t1 here and if we take time T two here. Now, if you remember, velocity was given as, or acceleration is actually dv by dt. So dv we can write as a dt. And now, if you want to know change in velocity within a fixed time instant, we can integrate both the sides with proper limits. We'll be obtaining change in velocity from time. T one to T two. You see here, this will give me change in velocity. So I am marking with this delta v, and this will be equal to integration of a dt within two instants of time T one to T two. Now easily we can integrate. Now if you remember, I told you, definite integral is nothing but actually area under the a t curve. So this is actually area under the acceleration time curve. now you see you see this curve now if you want to find change in velocity between t1 to t2 this is nothing but just you evaluate the area under this curve this was very simple there can be other curves also showing variable acceleration what i mean to say let us say if the acceleration is non uniform so second case for non uniform acceleration the acceleration can vary in many ways one simple let us say we have a simple curve in this way on the y axis we have acceleration on the x axis we have time now initially let us say for some time acceleration was increasing so it increased now see for some time period the acceleration remain constant so it will be a line parallel to time axis now again let's say acceleration is increasing with some different way let's say it's increasing in this way and now further let's say it started decreasing up till some certain value now during this instant you can see that acceleration once it increased once it remained constant again it increased now it got it decreased to a certain value with this graph what we can obtain we can only obtain change in velocity between certain time period and that will be evaluated by calculating the area under the curve for example if you want to calculate change in velocity between time t equals to 0 to time t equals to let's say t1 you can simply calculate or evaluate the area under this given graph so this will be the change in velocity Uh, for the given time duration t equals to zero, t equals to t one. So as per the given a t curve, we can evaluate the change in velocity. Next, let's talk about relative motion. That is more interesting. And let me assure you, most of you will be finding it difficult in the initial phase. But after this class, and if you practice questions, you'll find it interesting and easy to solve questions based on relative motion. Relative motion, as the word says, relative. That means one motion we are going to study it with some different reference frame 
before starting i the actual topic i use a term reference frame let us see what is a reference frame reference frame is nothing i need not to get confused with this term it is actually a platform from where you are observing the motion of some other object so what it is it is a platform it is a platform from where we are observing the motion of some object it's a platform from where we observe or let's say from where the motion of the object is observed from where the motion of object is observed now if we are observing the motion of some object by keeping us on some on a platform let's say on some reference frame that is we have to give the variable of velocity or acceleration with respect to the reference frame so it is a platform from where the motion of the object is observed now the coordinates the position the velocity all these variables all this physical quantities should be given with respect to the reference frame what i mean to say if i use this term should be given with respect to this reference frame let us take the motion of an object let us say this is a straight road let us say this is a straight road and let's say this is a car i'm going to draw a car and let's say this car is a and it is moving towards right hand side with some velocity okay and let's say you are standing just here this is you you are standing just here now your standing is stationary this car is moving if i ask you what is the velocity of this car a you will tell me the velocity of this car is simply you will say this is as let me mark this as va so that there will be no confusion this is v and let me mark you as b so this is velocity of car a that you will tell now suppose you also sat on a car and you also started moving along the same direction now if i ask you what is the velocity of the car that you are going to observe what we have done now now the car was moving and on ground it was moving with velocity va you also sat on a car or let's say you also started driving on a car and this is your car and you started moving with some velocity and let's say you got a velocity velocity b now if i ask you what is the velocity of car a that you are observing you will say that this time it won't be va because you are also in motion the velocity of car a as observed by you we are representing it as va slash b this will represent velocity of a with respect to b that is velocity of car a with respect to u and u are b so this will be given as this time va minus vb this was a very simple case this was a very simple case let's get into some complicated things here let's take the third example which we will be using this part of the board now let me take a very long rail car suppose we are talking about of a very long rail car let us say there are several rail cars joined together and all are in motion okay and let's say this rail car is moving with some velocity okay and let's call this as va this rail car is moving and let's say on this rail car a boy b is standing and he is walking with a velocity b on this rail car now suppose you are standing here you are standing here and you are observing this this rail car is moving this boy is also moving so you will say if i ask you what is the velocity of the boy as observed by you you will tell me the velocity of boy as observed by you will be vb plus va this will be the velocity of boy as observed by you now suppose you are also moving now suppose you also started moving so i'm taking another position of you you also started moving with some velocity let's say vc 
Now, if you recall, if you recall how I have explained you about relative motion and relative velocity, if I ask you now, what is the velocity of this boy B that was walking on the rail with some velocity VB and the rail is also moving, now which what velocity you will observe? You will say in the second case, the velocity of boy as observed by you will be equal to velocity of boy plus velocity of train that is the rail car minus your velocity. This will be the velocity of the boy with as observed by you while he was walking on the railroad. So that means you have to be aware, you have to be alert and alertly you have to observe what is the direction of motion and you have to give the relative velocity of the object or the person with respect to you. Let's come to some more example to make the understanding better. These are the basics. Now one term that I have used, one term that I have used, I told you velocity of A with respect to B was given as velocity of A minus velocity of B. So remember this basic equation velocity of A with respect to B was given as velocity of A minus velocity of B which I have used in the first case. Let us do an example that will entail a better understanding. Let us say two cars are moving towards each other with some different velocity. Let us say this car A it is moving towards right hand side with a velocity of 5 meter per second. Okay. Now, here I have a car B, here I have a car B which is again moving towards the right hand side with a velocity of let us say 2 meter per second. Now suppose as the car observes car B, the separation between the two let us say it is somewhere around 27 meter. The separation between the two is somewhere around 27 meter, both are traversing, both are moving. Now, but you see, car A has a velocity higher than car B. So, there will be an instant of time when car A will overtake car B. Suppose it is asked that at what time or in how much time car A overtakes car B. If you go to the basic algebra, if you start solving this question, you will say that let us take time t when car A overtakes car B. Then you will see that in this much time, car B will travel some distance. You will ev evaluate that and car A will also travel some distance, then what you will do as they both overtake, that means distance travelled by car A will be equal to 27 plus distance travelled by car B. This is a basic algebraic mathematical way that you can do and that is very easy. Now let us go with a shortcut method by the way of relative velocity and try to find out in how much time A will overtake car B. For this case, we will find out velocity of car A with respect to car B. Now, if we write velocity of car A with respect to car B, it will be VA minus VB. So, this will come out to be VA minus VB. Both are in same direction. We are taking right hand direction as positive. VA is 5 and VB is 2. So, 5 minus 2, that will come out to be 3 meter per second. So, that means with respect to car B, A is traveling with a speed of 3 meter per second. Now, to reach at point B, a will be moving with respect to B with this much velocity. To meet B, he has to cover only 27 meter with respect to car B. So, time taken to overtake B will come out to be time taken to overtake B will come out to be the separation between the two that is 27 and the relative velocity of A with respect to B will be this that is 3. So this will come out to be 27 by 3 that is equal to 9 seconds. So in 9 seconds car A will overtake B. But let me tell you, in 9 seconds the distance travelled by A will not be 27. It will be something different. To overtake car B, if it is asked what is the distance travelled by car A, so distance travelled by car A will come out to be distance travelled by A while overtaking B or during when it when he overtakes B that will be equal to speed of A multiplied by time 9. So this will be equal to 5 into 9 that is 45 meter. So actually 
it would have traveled 45 meter to overtake Carby. So this was all the basics of relative motion and we have done more relative, we have applied the relative velocity concept on a straight line. Now let us see what if we are going to see some certain special cases and how to use the concept of relative velocity in simplifying the complicated problems. Let's understand the case of river man problem or river flow problem. What happens generally you will observe that in a river always the river current is having some speed. So river is flowing with certain speed and if in the river current a swimmer jumps in and he tries to swim perpendicular to the flow of river or in some direction but that is not along the flow of river. What I mean to say let us start understanding river man problem. This is the first case river man problem and in this how the question how the case will look like this will be something like this there will be a river okay and you will be provided with the width of the river let us say it is d you will provide it with this now second you see these are the two banks of river this is bank one okay and let's say this is bank two generally the swimmer targets to reach from bank one to bank two what he does let us say this is swimmer and the swimmer tries to swim in this way he will jump in the river and let us say this is the swimmer and he will try to swim along this direction now the river will flow along this direction let us say this is the river and the river will be flowing towards this direction this is the given as vr that is the velocity of river this will be having some value now swimmer can flow perpendicular to the flow of river or he might flow in some other direction this might be the case he might flow along this direction or he might also swim along this direction in all these three cases let us try to understand and let us try to evaluate the value of some of the variables that will be involved in the case. So first case when swimmer or when man when swimmer swims perpendicular to when swimmer swims perpendicular to or normal to the flow of river when swimmer swims normal to the flow of river normal to the flow of river now see we have seen the river flow the river flow is like this this is the river as shown this is the river this is the velocity of river vr let us say now this swimmer let us say he is flowing in the direction that is normal to the river let us say we, we will mark this as velocity of swimmer as Vs. So velocity of swimmer, velocity of river. Now, the swimmer will not directly, he will not move. We will think that he might move to this point. Let us call this point as point A or to be more specific, he started from point A and let us say he reached point B. Now, we might think that he might target to reach point B. But due to the influence of the flow of river, he will not reach to point B, he will reach to some other point and that point will be somewhere here. This will be point B1 that he will be actually reaching. So what we find its next net velocity is somewhere along this direction. This is his net velocity. Let me mark this as V. So what you are finding, he was trying to move normal to the flow of river. The river was flowing towards right hand side but his actual velocity came out to be in this direction. That is the net velocity can be written as net velocity is velocity of swimmer plus velocity of river. Now if you see since it is having two components one normal component and one component along the flow of river these two components are Vs and Vr. So Vs component will be responsible to move him along the 
flow uh, along the normal direction and velocity of river will be responsible to give it a drift along the bank of river. So this is the drift which was given by the flow of river. Let us say the width of river is d as we have taken. So time taken, first question will be asked, what is the time taken for him to cross the river? So time taken to cross river will come out to be as since the width is the, the distance traveled is v in one direction and the velocity responsible to move him normal to the flow of river that was vs. So d upon vs will be the time taken for him to cross the river. Second part that will come what is the drift that has taken place in his motion. Now you see here he was targeting to reach here but he reached here. This is the drift that has occurred during his motion. So total drift or net drift, net horizontal drift will be the better term, net horizontal drift that has occurred in his motion that will come out to be as time multiplied by the horizontal velocity that is equal to vr into t. So this will come out to be vr since vr is the velocity component along the horizontal direction or along the flow of river that is the velocity of river so vr into t and that is d upon vs so we got this this is the drift and let's call this with term x let's mark this as x instead of by hurting the formula i will request you all you should understand the method how we have got this and if you know that the vertical, if you know that, we, if you know how to resolve into vertical velocity and horizontal velocity, it will be very easy for you all to solve this simple river flow problem. Let's go to the other case. When man was not moving normal to the flow of river, he was moving with some angle making to the normal with respect to the flow of river. Let's see the another case. When he was not moving normal, to the flow of river. In this case, now this is your river. Again, it will be always given that river is flowing along one direction and this time man is moving, making some angle with the horizontal, let's call it as theta, this is the velocity of swimmer, let us say. Now he is moving along this direction. River is moving towards right hand side. Okay. And again the width of river, let's take it as D. Our target is to find out in how much time will he cross the river. And in during this, as he crosses the river, how much drift has been occurred in his path. Now see its actual velocity will be what? This is the velocity of swimmer. Now this will be the velocity of river. So its next net velocity will come out to be somewhat here. This will be his net velocity. Let's call it as V. So V is net velocity. Again, by vectorial addition of Vs and Vr, that will be his net velocity. Now, if we take two components along the normal and if you mark this as Y and mark this as X, you see here <coughs> net velocity along the Y direction, that is along this direction, we can say that it will be Vs sin theta. <coughs> that will be equal to Vs sin theta and net velocity along the horizontal direction. You can see it. The influence along the, the velocity along the horizontal direction, along the flow of river, that will be due to its horizontal component and also due to the flow of river that will come out to be Vs cos theta plus Vr. This will be the horizontal velocity that will be coming in the motion of the swimmer. Now see how the swimmer will move. He will be reaching somewhere this point. Now we were talking about two different things we were relating. This will be the drift in his motion. This will be the drift. Now we have to evaluate in how much time will he cross the river. So time taken to cross the river will come out to be time taken 
to cross river. This is very easy, just simply take the width of river divided by the velocity vy, so d upon vy and this will come out to be d and vy is actually vs sin theta. So we got this. This is the time taken for him to cross the river. Second problem will be in this much time what is the drift that has occurred in this motion. So the drift or the net, net drift you can call it as this would be equal to time multiplied by the horizontal velocity. So I'm marking this as Vx multiplied by time. So this will come out to be Vs cos theta plus Vr. Vs cos theta plus Vr multiplied by time that will come out to be d upon Vs sin theta. So you note down this is the drift that has come occurred in his motion. This is all about the drift, this is all about the time taken to cross the river. Now you may see that he was moving, making an acute angle with the with respect to the flow of river. What if the angle is obtuse? <clears throat> then let us try to find out in how much time will he cross the river and what is the drift. In that case, the case will look something like this. Suppose again this is the river this is the river flow and let us say this time the man is moving along this direction and let us say this time this is the angle theta which he is making this time this angle is theta or to make it simple so that you may have the better understanding if you take this as theta and this is the velocity of swimmer now where will be his net velocity his net, net velocity will be somewhere here let us say his net velocity will be somewhere here, so he will be reaching here. So I am marking this as his net velocity as v. This will be his net velocity. Now we are interested in to find the time to cross the river and the width of river is again same as d. So first of all, just take two directions, one as x, one as y. So find out the velocity along the normal to the flow of river so that you mark as Vy. You can see Vy this time it will be Vs sin theta. You will get Vs sin theta as the velocity which is actually moving the man and helping him to cross the river and the horizontal velocity and the velocity along the flow of river this time due to his own velocity he will try to move in the opposite direction compared to flow of river and river is moving towards the right hand side so <clears throat> vx will be actually equal to vr minus v cos theta this will be his velocity with this given variables now we can calculate the time during which he crosses the river so time taken by him to cross the river time taken to cross the river will come out to be it will be actually equal to d upon we have to use the velocity vy so d upon vy this will be equal to d upon v sin theta as we have done earlier also again the same thing the drift that have occurred the drift this time only thing we have to take the velocity here we have got minus and initially we had plus sign so the drift this time will be in its motion that will be equal to Vx into time and this time it will be equal to Vr minus V cos theta, Vr minus V cos theta multiplied by time that is D upon V sin theta. Hope you can easily evaluate all these basic things related to river flow problem. Now, but one thing as I told you, don't try to buy heart all this formula. Try to see what is the question is seeking from you. And if you know the method, you can easily solve each and everything and each and every part of the question. I want you all to note down till here and I will continue from here. Hope you have understood the theoretical part of the river man problem. And now I'm going to show you a question based upon this. And we will understand how to apply all this learning that we have done. 
in the past few minutes. Let's note down a problem. Suppose a boat is moving in a river and it's given that the velocity of boat is n times less than the velocity of river. It's given that a boat whose velocity is a boat with a velocity n times less than velocity of river n times less than velocity of river is flowing in a river or let's say it's rowing in a it's rowing in a river now the boat's target is to cross the bank of river and as it crosses that we are drift now the next part of question is at what angle should it row to minimize drifting at what angle should it row to minimize drifting should it row to minimize drifting now it's given one thing the velocity of boat is less than the velocity of river let's try to solve this question with the diagram now you would be very easily you can draw the diagram this is the river which i am showing here hope this is visible to you all the velocity of river is somewhere here this is the velocity of river and the boat is trying to move some to row at some angle let us say this is the velocity of boat let us say this angle that it makes with the horizontal it's called this angle as theta now in this case as velocity of boat is less than velocity of river so we cannot avoid drifting drifting will be certainly there final velocity of boat will be somewhat like this this is the final velocity of boat and i told you final velocity of boat will be equal to this is the velocity of boat this is final velocity of boat final velocity of boat will be equal to velocity of boat plus velocity of river now i told you as i told you try to do the question along x axis and y axis let us say this is x axis and let us say this is y axis now the velocity which was responsible to move it in the y direction that will be given as the velocity along y direction will be given as you can see vb i have marked here vb sin theta will be responsible so i am marking here vb sin theta now with this velocity it is moving along the y direction now the horizontal velocity will be given as vx that will be equal to vr minus vb cos theta vr minus vb cos theta this is actually the velocity which is actually giving it a horizontal motion or let's say giving it a horizontal drift now first of all we have to minimize drifting first of all let us try to evaluate what is the time that it has taken to cross the river so time taken by it to cross the river time taken to cross river this as i told you simply you do the depth width of the river now see let us say the width of the river is given as d so d upon vy that is equal to vb sin theta this will be the time in which it crosses the river now the drift that will be coming in the boat drift drift will be actually equal to the horizontal velocity and the horizontal velocity was vr minus vb cos theta so vx into t that is equal to vr minus vb cos theta multiply it with time that is d upon vb sin theta the question is not straight we have to find out at what angle it has to drift to minimize the drifting this will come out to be vr into vb vr by vb so this is vr into d upon vb and 1 upon sin theta will come out to be cosec theta so this is the first thing we got now if multiply this term with this you will get vb and vb will cancel out 
minus d cos theta by sin theta will give you cot theta. This is the value of drift. Let's mark this as x. We have to minimize this term. It is dependent on theta. Now, if you remember, I told you in the maxima and minima portion, I told you if you want to find the maximum or minimum value, try to find the differential coefficient. So here what we will do, we will differentiate x with respect to theta. So dx by d theta will come out to be, this is constant, keep it as it is, vr into d upon vb. vr into d upon vb and differentiation of cosec theta. That is equal to minus cosec theta cot theta. This is the value of differentiation of this. Now minus d. So minus d and differentiation of cot theta will come out to be cosec minus cosec square theta. So this is minus cosec square theta. Now let's simplify this equation. See what we are getting. This will be equal to vr into d upon vb. And here we'll get plus d cosec square theta and equate it to 0. Substitute dx by d theta equal to 0. Then only you can get the answer. So you will get vr into d upon vb and minus cosec theta cot theta minus into minus plus d cosec square theta is equal to 0. You have to do in this way. I am using this part of the board to do further. Let us do here because this will not be required. Let us do here. dx by d theta equals to 0. We have to substitute it and we got this equation. If you see cosec square theta and cosec theta will be cancelled out. So I am writing here d cosec square theta is equal to vr into d by vr into d by vb multiplied by cosec theta cot theta cosec theta cot theta see what we are going to obtain one cosec theta one cosec theta will cancel out d and d will cancel out we will be obtaining cosec theta is equal to vr by vb cot theta we will be obtaining this now you know that cosec theta is equal to 1 upon sin theta and cos cot theta is cos theta by sin theta. So if we write this as 1 upon sin theta, this is equal to vr by vb and this will be equal to cos theta by sin theta. See here sin theta and sin theta will be cancelled out. We will be obtaining cos theta is equal to vb upon vr. Now I told you VB and VR relation. I told you VB and VR relation that was equal to VB is 1 upon n times of VR. So this we can write it as 1 upon n VR and VR. Again VR, VR will be cancelled out. You will be obtaining this as cos theta is equal to 1 by n or theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by n. This is the final answer. Let us come to the diagrams to have an understanding. That is, it has to rho with some angle theta making with the negative x axis and that angle theta will be equal to cos inverse 1 by n. This is the final answer of this question to minimize the drifting. I want you all to note down till here and we will continue. Okay, hope you would have understood about the concept of river flow problem. It's very interesting and you know you will get multiple problems in your textbook based upon this concept. After this we have one more kind of problem that is the rain man problem. And if you want to learn more we can have aeroplane wind problem. And that we will see in the coming subsequent classes. Before that, I will, I will ask you all to just once again revise the concept of relative velocity that I have just taught you in today's class. So after the class, do revise. See how you can use the concept of relative velocity and simplify your problems and you will get problems in lesser number of steps. And after this, 
try to revise all the derivation that I have taught you today based on river flow problem. How a swimmer swims with a problem on boat flowing in a river? Try to practice them. You will see that the relative velocity concept will make the problems much easier in this case. In the next class, as I told you, we will be talking about rain man problem. When the rain is falling, a man is holding an umbrella. He need not to hold the umbrella just vertically upward direction. He should hold the umbrella in the forward direction depending upon whether it's moving in the forward direction and how the rain is falling. So we'll see that case in this next, after the class. That is in the next class. Till the time, I thank you all. Do learn physics and do practice problems. That will be helpful. I'll meet you in the next class. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.